Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Did you know that it is actually impossible to cope some crown molding profiles? If you haven't run into this problem yet, I'm sure you will at some point in your career. And we're gonna talk in this video about how to identify a crown molding profile that cannot be coped and has to be mitered. I recently uploaded three videos to YouTube getting very in depth on how to install crown molding. And a question I got a lot was, why aren't you coping the crown molding? And the truth is I actually prefer to cope crown molding, but sometimes whenever the profile dictates it, you have to miter the crown molding because it cannot be coped. Now you might be thinking, Spencer, what are you talking about? What do you mean that the crown molding can't be coped? I thought anything can be coped. Well, actually, no, it can't. There's some very simple geometry that is involved in coping. And if a profile passes certain planes, it can't be coped. And that little section up there where it comes up past horizontal is going to make this profile not copable. As many of you know who have watched my videos, I prefer to cut crown molding in the nested position versus cutting it on the flat. So that's what we're going to talk about and I'm going to try to explain in depth in this video. So in doing that, our miter saw base becomes the ceiling and our miter saw fence becomes the wall. So let me put a couple 45 degree cuts on these. Now with two 45 degree cuts, these pieces of crown molding would go together like this. So again, as you can see, the base of the saw is the ceiling and the side is the walls. Whenever we would go to install these, it would get flipped over and installed like this. And that's why they say we cut crown upside down and backwards because it installs like this, but it's gotta be cut like this. Now, typically for most of us right-handers, we're gonna put the miter cut on the right side of the board, slide it down and cope it. But before we go down to the end and I show you why you can't cope this type of crown molding, I wanna talk about how you can most easily identify the crown molding on whether it's copable or not from the very beginning of the job. And it's very simple. Hang with me for just a second and I will show you this a lot more clearly on the computer. But as you can see here, we have two beads on this profile. Whenever these beads cross the horizontal plane, the, the profile cannot be coped. So in this situation, this bead comes down to this point, which would be at 90 degrees, and then it actually comes back up higher. That means it can't be coped. Let's take a look on the computer what I'm talking about. So here we are in SketchUp and I imported about a dozen different crown profiles. That way we could look at some different situations that you might have to decide on whether you cope or miter. Now, so let's just start off. This is a colonial crown. This is gonna be the most popular crown you probably ever run across. Very, very easy to cope. Love coping this because you can just snap the pieces right in place then and it's really easy to get tight joints, no problem at all. Now, the reason that's copable is because none of these points are coming up past the horizontal plane, and in fact, a lot of them are far from that. Your thinnest points of this profile, whenever you cope it, will be those that are closest to horizontal, so up here on the top, and then down here, a little bit here, and then this would just be square cut on the bottom. So that's not a big deal, even though it looks like it's coming up a little bit. Now let's take another look at uh, a profile that wouldn't be copable. This is gonna be very similar to what I just had in the shop. This is a double beaded crown and the bead, at least one of the bead will often come up past the horizontal plane and that little section up there where it comes up past horizontal is gonna make this profile not copable. This particular profile, as I've got here on the computer, is actually not copable on both beads. So pain in the butt to try to cope that, not even possible, gonna miter that all day long. Here is an interesting one down here. Let's check it. 
it's got the bead anytime you got the bead you know it's going to be a pain in the butt so again coming down on this bead it's coming up past level majorly not copable because of that area right there so by now you get the idea there are definitely uh, a lot of crown situations where you need to be able to miter crown so if you're just a coping guy uh, you need to broaden your horizons a little bit uh, if you're going to encounter crown profiles like this hopefully seeing that visually on the computer helped it make more sense to you now let's actually switch back here to real life and we'll move down here and try to cope this uncopable crown like I normally would if I was coping with my crown workflow. Again, one of the first things you'll notice is I've made my 45 degree cut as if I'm gonna cope it. Now, a lot of guys would just lay the crown flat on their saw and use a hand coping saw to, to make this cope. The problem with that is you don't always know exactly how much meat you should be taking off. If you're taking off too much or not enough, and there's actually a much better way to do it, in my opinion, and I'll show you that in a second. But as we move down here, keep this visual in your head. This is how we cut the crown. So this is how it's sitting. Whenever I go to cope the crown, I want to change the orientation and actually flip it so that it's like this. Now, why am I cutting the crown like this and then transitioning to flipping it like this whenever I make my cope cut on this piece. The reason we're cutting the crown in one orientation and then turning it to cope it is very simple. A cope joint is a through joint. So after I cope this, my, my next piece of crown on the wall is gonna actually slide through this piece. So that means as I cut, I need to be cutting perfectly in in this plane along this line and to do that and cut that way it's really hard to gauge that straight on shot right there now what's a lot easier is if you flip the crown and now it sits like this and now my pass through joint is coming through vertically so it's very easy for you to sight straight down and see if you're taking off enough wood or or too much uh, whatever the case may be. I may have lost some of you in trying to explain that, but just hang tight, we'll move down here and uh, show, you, show you what I'm talking about. By the way, guys, be sure to give this video a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button. That really helps me out. Also, if you wanna support the channel, use the links in the video notes below the video to purchase your tools. I get a kickback for that and it helps me uh, make this all worth my time. If you're interested in this barrel grip jigsaw and coping foot, I'll have the links below the video. Full disclosure, I gotta give respect where respect is due. I learned this technique from Gary Katz uh, a lot of years ago, and Gary, I believe, learned it from uh, Collins, who invented the Collins coping foot. So really appreciate those uh, pioneers of the industry who came up with this stuff. But what we just did was we cut our miter like this, we're sliding it down and we're flipping, okay? We're coming from here to here, and now our crown is gonna rest like this. Now here's the beautiful thing about coping crown with in this orientation, and if you can understand this, it'll make all the difference in the world and make coping so easy on crown. Now that we've got the crown in this orientation, as this sits on the wall, our next piece of crown is going to pass through vertically. So imagine that we're going to take this next piece of crown and it's going to pass through this coat piece of crown vertically like, vertically like so. Because of that, whenever we're coping, all you have to do is keep in mind your vertical axis as you cut. As long as you're just slightly tilted over as you cut, you know you're taking off enough meat as you go down. So with your vertical axis, stay tilted slightly. You don't have to be at some crazy angle because it doesn't matter. You just have to, again, visualize that next piece of crown coming through. And if you're back cutting just a little bit at an angle, that's gonna be enough. So that applies in this orientation, but then it also applies as we come over here 
We also want to stay straight up and down to slightly tilted this way, and that's going to ensure we're taking off enough meat. Now, traditionally, a lot of guys would just put the crown flat on the bench, get out their hand coping saw, and start going to town. The problem is you don't know if you're taking off enough meat or not. It takes a lot more experience with different profiles to know where you need to be taking more off and where you need to be taking less off. Because with crown, as you cope it, you're gonna have some parts of the crown that get paper thin. You're gonna have to back cut it like crazy, uh, but cutting it in this orientation takes all of the guesswork out of it. Now, as many of you know, I don't cope by hand. This is a relic that has never even probably been used. It just happens to be out in my shop. I cope everything with a uh, barrel grip jigsaw with a Collins coping foot on it. Same concept. All you gotta do is keep that jigsaw blade vertically or vertical or slightly canted over and that's gonna be enough. So now before I get into coping this, I'm gonna show you the trouble area on this particular crown profile, which makes it uncopable. Again, as you see here, if we were to turn this piece of crown as it will sit on the wall, I'll use this piece because it's gonna demonstrate a little bit better. This bead right here that comes up and crosses the horizontal plane, this point is uncopable because this point drops below this point. So let's try and cope this crown now and see what happens. Now I left this part for last because watch what happens. Because this round bead is coming around, I have to cut this straight on for the coat piece to go through. If I don't do that, this actually won't work. I'm sorry if that was painful to watch. This is an old blade and as you can see, it's quite crooked. So I just switched out and put a new blade on this. But this area right here, because I didn't cut this straight, you'll notice that whenever I test fit this piece, I'm not getting a tight joint right here. That is because all of this needs to be cut out. Because this bead comes back up across the horizontal plane, I'm not able to get a tight joint. So if I wanted to cope this, I would have to cut this out and then I'd have this really ugly spot right here. I'd have to cut the profile out. Obviously that wouldn't pass for stain grade and uh, it would be pretty ugly for paint grade also. So this is where we're at right now. Let me go ahead and remove this area and see if we can get this to tighten up right here. As you can see, in order to get this tight, and I realize this is a far cry from a pretty cope joint, but to get this to tighten up, I had to remove this whole area of that bead, and you can see how ugly that is. Now, in an extreme situation, uh, if I had to, say, cope into this for some obscure reason, I could probably caulk that and make it look okay, but that's certainly not what you would want to do for a whole house. In summary, what did we learn? We learned that not all crown is copable. Anytime a crown profile comes up past the horizontal plane, it's gonna be an uncopable crown. If you wanna get great results and make coping really easy, cope your crown in the nested position. That way, all you have to remember is to keep your blade slightly canted over from vertical and you know exactly how much meat to take off or leave on.
if you take off too much meat on a profile, that will leave the edge very delicate and brittle and it'll be prone to chipping off like this did here. If you leave too much meat on, whenever you go to put your piece of crown into place, you'll realize that you didn't take enough off and your joint won't want to tighten up. It won't be possible because there's too much meat on the backside here. So I have had absolutely great success coping in the nested position. So finally guys, just a word of encouragement, broaden your skill set as a carpenter. There's one thing that I have learned since the time I've been putting up YouTube videos is that there are a lot of carpenters who think their way is the only way and they close their mind to anything else. Anytime you are so certain your way is perfect and right and correct, you close your mind and you can't learn anything. There are times uh, I prefer to cope crown, but there are profiles where I need to miter it. There are also times where I might only need to do one room of crown, and it doesn't make sense for me to go and grab my jigsaw and get all set up to do that. I might as well just hit the miter and go install it and be done with it. Um, there are times where it might not make sense for me to go get my auxiliary fence for my, for my miter saw to be able to cut crown in the nested position. And being able to make a, coop, a few cuts coping on the flat is a valuable skill. I had one time back whenever I was running my Festool Capex, I had to go to a job and install three pieces of seven and a quarter crown around a fireplace bump out. Just three pieces, the crown was too large for the Capex to cut in the nested position so that meant I had to cut it on the flat. I didn't know what I was doing. So I had to learn that. If I would have known how to do that, it would have been really quick, but instead it was a struggle. The more skills that you have, the more uh, tricks that you have up your sleeve, the better car carpenter that you're gonna be. So don't get boxed into one way of doing things. Diversify your skill set, and it'll make you better uh, in the long run. So. Hope you found this video useful. Hit that thumbs up button, subscribe if you haven't already, and thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next video.